Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of General Geekery. We are neither live nor at Denver Fan Expo, but coming to you from almost live and almost Denver Fan Expo, one of the biggest uh, Comic Cons in the country. Uh, at least it was a couple of years ago. Uh, at one point in time, we got to uh, second only to San Diego Comic Con. Jeez. Yeah, it was, it was, it, this Colorado did not have a, a convention at like a big convention. They had something called Starfest, which was the the local one that like Emily and I grew up. Um and and they did fairly decent names. Um I mean, we met William Shatner there, William Frakes, uh Brett Spiner was there, um LeVar Burton. We we met uh I met um Jeremy Bullock there. Uh I got a couple autographs for you. I think. Um, oh, when, is that where Jim Steranko was? And... No, no, that okay. was Denver, that was Denver Comic Con. Um, but uh, Galron, I think I got Galron's autograph. For oh, you. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was all at Starfest, uh, and that that folded a couple of years ago. They just couldn't keep up, or could keep it redden or whatever. Um, so. That went away and then so it was very it's a very to use a term from my profession very underserved area yeah i could see that um so when we got a, a big convention that got you know at least b-list people it took off because i mean when you look at the the area that we're in you know we got kansas to the to the east nebraska and Wyoming to the north and you know there's there's nothing in in any of those places Salt Lake City has a big convention in Utah uh and there's one in Phoenix I think but I don't think there's much in New Mexico either so, well like, and those are a heck of a those are a heck of a travel so yeah so I mean it's like a four or five state region that doesn't have a you know really big convention to go to so People come from all around to go to the Denver. It's Denver Fan Expo was Denver Comic Con, but they sold it a few years ago. Uh, and um, it's one of the Fan Ex and there's Fan Expos. There's one in like Boston and uh, Sun Dallas, maybe I don't know. I, I I've seen Fan Expos. There's Fan Expos in a bunch of different places. So it's like one of the franchised conventions um yeah earlier on my timeline today i saw some people posting pictures with star trek people from denver fan expo so yeah. um yeah they had a big star trek presence last year emily uh freak jonathan frakes was here so my buddy uh who I hooked up with at the convention last year and this year, his uncle used to own the restaurant that all of the Star Trek, the next generation crew would go and eat at after filming. So he has a menu from that restaurant that he gets autographed by all the Star Trek people. And they all remember. And that's cool. Yeah. So he, uh, he has Patrick, uh, Patrick Stewart, autographed it uh while he was eating in the restaurant uh and then jonathan frakes and um william dorn autographed it uh last year and then uh, okay. emily got uh, gates mcfadden's autograph last year as well as john delancey um but she hadn't met uh she hadn't met gates mcfadden before so that was one that she needed for kind of her collection um so have you all met Patrick Stewart? No. Okay. No. Um is he is, Patrick Stewart's the like the one that we have not I haven't seen for sure. And Emily hasn't seen uh the one that Emily doesn't have because she didn't go to fan to uh Starfest that year, but a buddy and mine did buddy and mine did uh we saw uh Marina Sirtis. But that's that's like the only one from the like the senior officers senior staff from next generation that she doesn't have aside from patrick stewart who i don't see 
him doing conventions anytime soon. I mean, William Shatner's still doing them, and he's friggin' 93 because he's going to be at some convention in Las Vegas uh, in beginning of August. And he's usually he usually comes to this one. I mean, he's been at the last two Denver Fan Expos, I think, but he didn't come this year. Um, the year that I went to the convention in Buffalo to meet uh, Billy D. Williams, uh, William Shatner, and Nichelle Nichols were both there. Um, yeah, I saw it's true too. I saw William Shatner walk by with a couple of his people. Now, I know at the time that he was pushing 90, but it wasn't 90 yet, but he looked extremely tired. Like, he wanted to do nothing but go take a nap. Yeah. Um, That's um, kind of what Emily said about Ron Perlman last year. She he, She's like, he looks like somebody's grandpa. Because, um, yeah, well, he, he was he was not he was not Hellboy and he was not not the 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 biker from Sons of Anarchy. He was no, he's he probably well, he is a grandpa. So yeah, he was probably in grandpa mode. Yeah. Um he uh yeah, because I don't yeah, I don't I don't really see Patrick Stewart doing conventions in the near future or ever, but um a friend of mine actually worked a uh, crew for season two of Star Trek Picard. Okay. Um, she used to, she used to give uh, the morning COVID tests to them. Um, uh, okay. Uh, on shooting days, so yeah, because she was, um, yeah, she was hired as crew for various jobs, but yeah, it came down to, uh, they gave her the COVID kits, and so she talked to everybody, and she said they're all very nice people. She had conversations with Patrick Stewart, and I feel like people that don't get to interact with him um or she said he's every bit as nice as he seems like he would be and she said she feels bad for people that never get a chance to meet him um and i would imagine that if he did go to conventions he would probably be mobbed um yeah no doubt there'd be there'd be star trek people there there'd be x-men people there and well, you know, he's done some other movies too. So, yeah. um, um, <clears throat> ton of stuff. But did you, uh, so you looked extremely happy in your yes. picture, of Adam Savage. And yeah, so that's who I went he, to see this year was Adam Savage. Yeah. I, he looked just as chuffed as you did. Um, so I know you. Well, I know you said you waited in line for about an hour and a half. But what did you do when you got up there? Did you just like present it to him or did you? Well, that's kind of the, the interesting part is I got up to the head of the line. So I bought, so everybody's buying their autograph tickets at the table. And after the, the fiasco with um, Bruce Campbell last year of not being able to get my fi figure autographed because I didn't prepay for an autograph ticket. Although this was at Colorado Springs Comic Con, I'm like, I'm not going to miss out on this. Like the one person, Emily and I always talk about if we had a list, put a list together of celebrities that you would like to meet, that you'd be willing to spend a reasonable amount of money on for autographs and be willing to go to a convention, Adam Savage would be at the top of that list. Number one, I love Mythbusters. I've been watching that since it was first on the air. Uh, I follow Adam Savage's YouTube channel, um, Tested. Uh, I learned, I mean, I used, I watched a ton of their videos when I just was decided to, it was time to buy an airbrush. And I, I bought an airbrush based off of recommendations from the Tested channel. I love his one day builds. I mean, that's, that's what I call my customs nowadays. I've gotten my, my process streamlined that my customs are one day builds now. And that's, that's all Adam Savage's stuff. And Adam Savage posted something a number of years ago saying that you shouldn't keep your, your techniques don't belong to you. You shouldn't keep those secret. You shouldn't gatekeep. You should pass those on. So that is, he was the Reed. main, he was the main inspiration for me creating this YouTube channel to share how I do what I do with my customizing. And we just happen to host the podcast on this channel. 
because it was simpler than starting a new one. Yeah, because I have my, my own YouTube channel, but it is empty of mostly content, and I don't, yeah, I don't have any uh, drive to post anything regularly. Um, so I, I got up there. I got up there. So I bought, the, I prepaid for my ticket is the thing. So I had a, a, QR, a QR code on my phone. And unfortunately, the Denver Convention Center is notoriously horrible for uh, number one cell service and Wi-Fi. It's absolute garbage. Why the fuck does a convention center not have better internet? I that don't... is that is that is counterintuitive in in all the ways. That is fucking ridiculous. So I got up there, my QR code wouldn't work, and they're like, "Well," I'm like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." I'm like, I have, they're like, we're just going to send the people behind you through. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I've been in line for an hour and a half. They're like, what, what are you getting signed? I'm like, because at this point in time, the, the, the crowd had cleared off. I mean, he'd, st- it was taking a long time to get through the line because Adam Savage was talking to people. I mean, he was chatting with everybody, which I really appreciate. I will spend extra time in line to talk to some for my opportunity to talk to somebody and I won't begrudge anybody else that either. So he was like fucking around on his phone because he didn't have anything to do because they're dealing with me. And they're like, well, you know, eh, well, I'm like, uh, uh-uh. we'll, we'll just start. What, how about we start sending people behind him? I'm like, no, I, hang on. Well, what do you got to get signed? I'm like my figure. Well, we'll, we'll get him to sign it. I'm like, well, I want to talk to him too. And they're like, uh, uh, okay, just go. And then we'll fuck. What? It's not like you're bullshitting. Um, right. I mean, I've got it pulled up on my phone. It shows exactly what I paid for. I'm like, I've worried. I, I'm like, I'm not, well, not going to dick you out of money here. So, well, and what kind of goofy solution is that? Give it to us. We'll have him sign it. I no. no. I'm like, no. No, I spent a lot of money on this. I've been spending, the money is irrelevant, honestly. I, I don't. I, I think the problem is, what are they like his handlers or what they don't understand they don't turns out one of his, it'll, it'll get to that one of his handlers was his wife and i'll that actually ended pretty well I'll, no i meant i meant like the like the pr like the like the like the seller guy you know with the they're not even if you showed it to him it'd be lost on them the significance of it um exactly but, so i got up there and I'm like, what a hassle. And he's like, I know, right? The internet shit. I'm like, yeah, it's always like that. So I told him, I'm like, you know, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So I got up there and I'm like, it's not every day that I get to do this. And of all the people that I wanted to show my work, that I wanted to show my work to, you were at the top of that list just based off of everything that you've done, you know, doing stuff for the Mythbusters, the Tested channel, the one day builds, and, you know, just, innovating new ideas to make like cosplay and prop replicas and i said that's what I, my little niche and you know content creation i said because of the tested channel i have my own youtube channel and do content creation for custom action figures and that's what i do and i said what this, did he say to that i'm just like he then he because he was looking at me he wasn't even focused on he because he just he didn't know what i had and then he yeah. looked at it and he's like, he was like, he was kind of speechless for a second. And he's like, these are amazing. I said, I, I said, I'm not to the point where I can do the digital sculpting in, you know, to, for the three printing. He says, well, that is the hard part. I said, yeah, I've got a buddy that does it. And we're going to get Isaac on the show from uh, Craniac. I just need to sit down. I needed to get this convention out of the way before we schedule isaac from craniac studios but we're gonna have craniac on on an upcoming episode fuck yeah and hey he wasted no time reposting your picture oh, with that savage i saw that i um, saw, thought that was fantastic yeah like you shared it you posted it like an hour later craniac posted it i'm like it's good pr for him too i mean yeah i but i feel like like he he craniac's been posting a lot of people's customs you know that that and but yours, I like. I'll see you post them, and then consistently, I'll see them post them too. I'm like, 
Yeah, they, like oh, they're actually like really- they're following your like they're following your work, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, but, pretty, uh, um, so Adam oh. said, was he like? He's like, yeah, these are. He's like, these are amazing. These are fantastic. And I, I said, I, I pulled it out of the packaging, and I'm like, it's double sided. I've put Easter eggs in the the card. I said, I did, I did all the graphic art myself. I, I have somebody they're professionally printed, but I, I did all the assembly, and they're hand painted. I, and I said, you know, I did a little. I don't think I did any. I said they're not as complex as most of my regular projects because most these are just like head swaps and repaints because i took uh for the adam savage figure i used uh, a marauder task force figure and of course the head from craniac and it's it's a two-pack and i've got it right here um i'll take it out of the packaging too uh it's a two-pack so i did it based off of uh his iron man mark one armor so it's a Iron Man two, Iron Man Mark one figure. So it's the Iron the Iron Man Mark one from the Iron Man two figure line, and I just put his head on it. And of course, okay. You, and you commissioned Craniac for that, right? For his, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I commissioned the head for it. Uh, Craniac's pretty cool about not putting stuff in the store. Uh, that I've commissioned until after I've posted my custom. So that's like, pretty cool. I commissioned awesome. two of the last, the last two um, sons of anarchy heads. So Piney and uh, Bobby. They didn't have those, so I commissioned those, and he waited until I had my my customs made before he put those in the store. That's so, cool. I like the courtesy of that. I, um, I, I have to admit that's nice because I would assume that uh, now that my stuff is up, that they will put the Adam Savage head up in the. Um, so, which, which I'm going to get another one of. And Adam Savage is a huge Ghostbusters fan, so I'm going to do an Adam Savage Ghostbusters custom. Oh fuck yeah, that's awesome. Um, um, the uh, um, you know, I'm not at all surprised that he's a big Ghostbusters fan. Um, so did you? So he appreciated all the little touches on the, yeah. um, so, and then yeah, he- after, and uh, so I, they asked me I because the, I do so the selfies at the booth too and the photo op is separate and they, I was dicking around with stuff when the gal was like writing down stuff so you know so they give you a little sticky note when you get in line of what what you want on your on your written on your thing and he didn't even look at that he just autographed it because he 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 was just like. Didn't even pay That's attention awesome. to the handler's notes because he's like, this is awesome. I was like, I got to pick the right color for this. It's like, I've got to, I've got to, oh, Emily just got here. Hi, Emily. We're podcasting post-show, post, post-convention. post Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to hear him nerd out about Adam Savage, so. So, so I, they asked me, I'm like, did you, you know, did you get the photo op and the autograph? I'm like, yeah, I did the photo op on the autograph. They meant the um, selfie. And I, I didn't, but they marked down the photo op. So I got the selfie by accident. Oh, that's cool though. Cause yeah. Cause he's I like, don't... Hey, uh, cause I was, he signed it and gave it back. And he's like, Oh wait, you still have the photo, you know, the selfie. I'm like, uh, all right. You know, I was just like too overwhelmed to argue. So uh, I handed him my phone. He, he's like, oh, those are cute dogs. Cause I've got Alice and Izzy as my lock screen oh, on my yeah. phone. And I said, yeah, they're Australian cattle dogs. And he says, too bad they're not smart. And I said, uh, they're a little too smart for their own good. And he started laughing. And I said, I was going to say, Izzy's a smart little shit. Yeah. Um, um, she's a, she's the, there's Pinky in the brain. Mm. Alice is Pinky, and yes, is he's the brain? Um, absolutely. <laughs> so he started laughing, and I said, I, I told him that they're both rescues, and he said I was literally just talking to the gal that's babysitting my dog while while you were dealing with the with the the all the other stuff, and so he he pulled out his phone. He's like, here, here, here. So he was showing me pictures of his dog. So. 
I think it's possible that you and Adam Savage might be soulmates, and you didn't know that until today. Yeah, I I told him when because when I went to go do the the photo op, you know, I was like, hey, you know, good to see you again. And, uh, I said, I wish you were my next door neighbor so I could brainstorm some of these some of these ideas that I have with you because I think he would of all the like I said of all the people that would find this hobby to be interesting I think Adam Savage would top that list because of the prop replicas that he makes and just the the and the cosplay I think this would just be like I I whole- feel like if you wanted to do like a big vehicle custom I feel like he'd want to help yeah um i i get that sense that like i could tell him like hey i've got this idea this is what i want to do how do i do that how do i make that happen and he would know how to do that he would have a really good idea yeah, so oh, yeah. that's what they did on mythbusters is like we want to do this thing nobody's ever done this thing how do we do this thing I mean, that was the whole premise of Mythbusters. One of the big premises of Mythbusters was like, how do we do this? Nobody's ever tried to do this before. So I think that he would he would love that. He would dig that the most. Well, because in that picture, you know, you're holding the custom, but he's like, he's smiling at the camera, but he's like pointing at the figure. Like, you could see yeah, I've got that, that like he, you could see yeah, that that he's he's proud that he inspired your work. Yes. Um, what is on oh. his hat in the picture? Uh, it's a NASA logo. Oh, okay. Because I remember when you first sent me the pictures of the custom you were making, and I'm like, doesn't he always have a hat? You responded with "bitch, please," and you sent me the picture of the hat that you had painted up for him on the head, and I'm like, oh, all right, there we go. You're all set then. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's wearing a uh a shirt with uh the it looks I, I'm pretty sure it's the Nostromo. It's the patch from the Nostromo. Nice. Oh, is that what that is on the sleeve? I couldn't yeah. decide what it was. I was trying to figure it out. I'm like that. I'm like, I recognize that, but it wasn't it wasn't really ringing. It was ringing a bell, but I couldn't identify what it was. Ah, that makes sense now. Um, yeah, it's it's a patch from the Nostromo. I think it's one of his his last cosplays he did a bunch of stuff from Alien. Okay, yeah, because, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, looks a little bit like the outfit that Ash wore in that movie, the yeah. coveralls. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that was not my brain filling in gaps. That is probably what it was. That's exactly um, what it was. It's a, it's a uniform from Alien. It's the Nostromo crew uniform. Um, yeah, I thought, is it? I'm like, is that... Or am I thinking of something? Else? Okay, that makes sense. Um, so after I got all of that done, the lady's like, "Can you come back and we'll just take a picture of your QR code to so we can, you know, balance the books?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's amicable." Yeah. Turns out I'm pretty sure there was his wife, and she saw my shirt, saw that I was wearing a Savage Industry shirt, and she's like, "Thank you for your support." And then she like looked around and then like dug into a like reached under the table and dug into a bag and then gave me one of the Savage Industry stickers. Oh, shit. That's nice. Yeah, so she... Um, oh, damn. Didn't want to see that... You know, didn't want to show that they had swag to hand out and they weren't giving it to everybody. That's cool. But, uh, um, yeah, so... Uh, when, I told, when I told that... I told uh, Adam Savage at the photo op the real photo opt-in. I was like, yeah, I wish, you know, I had you as a next door neighbor so he could brainstorm some of this stuff. And he, he's like, just keep it up, man. So. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Um. So aside of Adam Savage and the sales floor, what have you seen? Like, did you, is there a lot of, are there, are there like props and TARDIS and stuff like that to do? Because, so there's, there's usually a, a TARDIS in the you know at at conventions that I've been to, but it's this is actually a really nice convention. I mean, it gets a lot of shit, and I give it a lot of shit, but it's it's actually pretty well. The five hundred first represents pretty well. I'm still pretty mad at them because they are doing the charity auction. So 
I did, but they didn't do any social media stuff for it. Didn't ask for donations. I don't know what they're auctioning, auctioning off, but it's not my figures that I said I would do this year. So I'm still kind of mad at them for having a piss poor social media. And well, yeah, it was just what two episodes ago that you were like, I'm not doing the figures because. I'll do them next year because they haven't updated. They haven't posted anything. They haven't. I don't think they're doing the auction. Yep. So it turns out they are doing the auction. They just and I still didn't don't... bother to do any PR for it. Nope, none at all. And it's online this year. I don't know if there's if they're doing one in person like they normally do because there's nothing on fucking social media about it. And I saw the gal. I saw her a couple of times. I almost went up to her. I'm like. If I say something, it's not going to be nice. So I I don't want to be better not say anything at all. Yeah, um, gonna, it's like I'm 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 trying to help you guys. You know, I want right. to want to be part of this, but you're making it really hard for me to to do this. But well, it's hard to maintain enthusiasm when it seems like it's going to fall on deaf ears. Um, yeah. um, did so, uh. So I'm going to try, I'm going to get the figures done and then I'll just set them aside. And then it looks like the same gals involved. So I'll just like, Hey, do you want these or what? And so hopefully next year, there'll be a couple of my figures in the, the make a wish auction next year. So hopefully they, I don't know, keep you in the loop or I don't know, advertise or something. I'll probably um, talk to her tomorrow or Sunday and it's just, just hey look, man, what's this what's the story here? And what is Oh, are it? you going back to the convention next year tomorrow? Okay. Yeah, because Emily Emily had to work today. And okay. She, and she didn't want to go Thursday. So Emily and I are gonna go tomorrow and probably Sunday. Cause uh like I said, there is a ton of stuff to do. So 501st is there. There's a car club that usually has geeked out cars, so there's usually some version of DeLorean. the uh no not usually uh there's uh, like a ghostbusters fan club so there's somebody that's okay. taken a newer car and turned it into an ecto-1 um there's not usually a delorean now they think about it but they they've got a couple of the car clubs that that bring in geek cars um there's a huge artist they call artist alley so there's like artists and authors and just tons and tons of that uh, with people like Lauren was here last year. We need to get her on the show again. Um, she's busy. I've asked her. She's just, she's busy. She got a lot going on. She does a lot of conventions. Um, yeah. I was um, sad to see. And, that wasn't and then too. she does work like for comic book companies and stuff. Like she draws covers and stuff for. What's that? Yeah. I was kind of sad that, that she didn't uh, come to this one this year. Um, yeah, it seems like uh, when she posts stuff, yeah, she's got a lot of convention appearances and stuff. Um, yeah. So, all right, so this is a different show than that Bruce Campbell nightmare because you were, well, because even before you went to that one, you're like, uh, this one's usually kind of fucked up. And then afterwards, you're like, yep, yeah, it was worse than I even anticipated. So, mm -hmm. The Denver Fan Expo is good. The other one, what is it? The Colorado Springs Colorado. one? Yeah. Yeah, you say, it's just, so you're doing that one again this year though, right? I haven't decided. Ernie Hudson is going to be there. <gasps> what? You need yeah. his autograph. I know. Um, and I've already started working on the card and I'm going to do another, uh, another uh, Winston Zedmore custom because I already have the one done for the box set. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't decided because it was a cluster, Wait, is, cluster. Is your internet fucked up or is mine? Because nah, you're my, all like dolicky. My internet's fucked up because it's, we're at my in-laws house and they have shitty internet. Oh, okay. Um, so, cause you know, Ernie Hudson, he's done so many projects. You could do. You could do a custom. I mean, you could do a ghost, but, but you could do so many that you'd like to get autographed. Yeah, um, the other one I was thinking about doing was him from um, The Crow. He was in The Crow as well, I believe. Wasn't he in The Crow? 
Well, he and that I haven't seen. I saw the crow years ago. I'm not really a fan, so I don't. Yeah, he was he was the cop? He was a cop in the crow. Uh, yeah, I I saw that so many years ago. I bought the head from Craniac to do uh, um, Brandon Lee from the Crow. So I did the I did an O-ring figure of the Crow, or maybe new sculpt. I don't know. I did a Crow figure when I first started customizing. So it's it's probably been almost twenty years ago that I did that that custom. Um, so I was yeah, I decided it was time to do a new Crow custom. And then, yeah, then Ernie Hudson's coming. I'm like, uh, I could do his character from the Crow, or, but I've already got the card designed um, for the Ghostbusters, and it's it's a pretty cool card. So, um, well, Winston Zedmore is it's probably his most well known card. Yeah. Um, but the uh, um, so did you? I know yesterday you posted a Master Chief and a galactic marine did you buy anything today or were those the only toys you bought no i got yeah i got them yesterday um the funny thing about the galactic marine is i probably bought a hundred of those things when they were oh yeah because when you said when you sent me the picture like i didn't have one in my collection that's because you customized 75 of them way back when we were on like commando customs and the good to go boards you bought I think you bought up most of the Galactic Marines that were in the stores in Colorado and Probably. customized all of them. So yeah. I was not remotely surprised when you said there was not one in your collection because they're in pieces. And yeah. those pieces are probably in a bunch of cards on your wall. They are. Um, they are. Um, yeah, no, that was one of, the, one of the figures I probably, literally probably bought close to a hundred of i used the the legs on all of my uh republic commandos uh i i customized just the straight figure a bunch of times into there was a arctic one a desert one i yeah i i bought a shit ton of those figures and as i've mentioned on the previous shows i'm i am in the process of displaying all of my loose action figures on a wall on several walls and I noticed that I don't have the third no, I... Galactic Marine in my collection. I'm like, yeah, because I customized every last one of them that I bought. I didn't save one. Exactly. Back. So I'm like, you know, I should fill that hole in with in my collection. And what better time to do it than to get one from the the convention? How, how much did it set you back? Was it expensive? Uh, I was like 25 bucks. So, I mean... Eh. It's about more what... expensive, probably than you wanted it to be, but that's not bad. I mean, it is on the card, so that's not bad. And I'm um, gonna open the card. Are you gonna open those after you get home? Yeah, I don't want to lose stuff up here. Um, well, because for the first time in a while, I have something to open. Um, because last week or the week before, oh yeah, when when Brian was putting his shelves up and he was making his display he sent me a picture of this war machine in the tray but out of the card and it reminded me because he was like well i forgot to bring it out so i could open it on the show and it reminded me that when this figure came out i had it pre-ordered but i think my order had gotten canceled or something at the time and yeah. so I never reordered it. It just got lost in the shuffle. Um, and because uh, it was one of those, because I had the deluxe war machine that they put out back in like 2020 or 2021. So it was this figure, but it was silver and black or silver and like dark gray. And it had like all the accessories and like the roadie head and whatever. But um, so since, since, because when Brian posted it and said, I forgot to open it on the show, it reminded me that, you know what? I need to get one of those finally. So I got one, found one on Amazon from a seller for cost plus shipping. Um, so, yeah, so it was a deal. Um, but I'm like, well, as beautiful as this retro style card is, 
I'm not leaving it on the card because fuck that nonsense. Um, so I'm really impressed with the card on the card, how the cards are constructed. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, you really gotta try to, like, you really gotta try to fuck these up. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, you could do that if it, if you got brute force, but like in a shipping crate or whatever, these are going to be fine. And you're certainly never going to have to worry about the bubble falling off. Um, because these cards are, they're like triple layered. They're like three layers thick yeah. and there's one on the back, one on the front and it's the sandwiched. edges of the bubble are sandwiched between. So yeah, it's, it's like six layers of cardboard. I am, um, I am going to, I am, I am looking at re redesigning how I make my cards based off of how they do these. Because the yeah, because uh, they really because yeah, because... these cards. I mean, I like the retro style. I like the tribute that they. But sure. yeah, these figures, like a carded collector, is not going to have a problem keeping these in good shape. And yeah, absolutely not. There's certainly not going to be any thievery in the store from these because they're a whole lot of fucking trouble to get into. Um, and, you know, the other thing they're not going to be able to do, they're not going to be able to repack these. Because you can't, you can't repack. You can't open it and seal it. Like you yeah, can't that's true. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. There's not going to be any swapping. There's not going to be any shenanigans. Um, I, so I absolutely love how they design these cards. I like I said, I am actively rework, redesigning in my head at this point in time, reworking how I am going to do my cards going forward, and it's going to be based off of this. I like this diagram. Yes. Um, because there was um, I know that was on the back of the Toy Biz cards too yeah. but you know somebody yesterday on Facebook I saw somebody somebody posted that they had a whole wave of those Toy Biz Iron Man figures and they were about to pop them open but I don't know this person I almost I almost responded with be fucking careful with the accessories because they're vac metal and they're probably they're probably brittle as shit, but I don't really, this person, they're on my friends list, but I don't really know them and I've never interacted with them. So I didn't say anything, but I'm wondering if I should go back because we know like anything that's like gold plastic with the chrome over it. I know all the transformers from the nineties that have, that have the back metal uh or that that are just made of gold plastic they're all brittle as shit and they all break apart so yeah it's called like I, said, I don't, it's, I don't really know the person like gold plastic syndrome yeah there's yeah there's yeah that, that, that's right there's a whole term for it gold plastic yeah. syndrome because yeah it's fucking brittle um yeah. so the, all uh, i could G.I. Joe stuff from the 90s uh, is also notorious. The gold stuff from the, like, the Battle Coral line is super bright. <clears throat> oh, yeah, like, um, Barricade. And, uh, uh, I think some of the vehicles have that issue. Um, uh, some of the, I think one of the Vipers came with some gold weapons that were, were fragile, too. Um, oh, that's right, the Sonic Viper. Sonic Viper, Um yeah. Yeah, the gold plastic, it looks cool, but yeah, I actually wonder if those convention figures from that, from the 1996 collection, that coil ferret yeah. that they had, I, because there's a lot of gold plastic on that, I wonder if that has those issues. Um, I don't have any of those figures. I, I want. do like that this comes with some of the accessories from the deluxe war machine like it's got the missiles and the missile pod yeah it doesn't have all the extra shit which is fine because i think for photography purposes i think those blast effects are really cool i don't have the patience to fuck with them a lot um so many i don't know what to do with them all that i i don't need more of them um okay right out of the package he's not stiff joints He's not 
I don't. Yeah, he moves. I don't need to put any uh, hot water. I was just seeing if there was any resistance, because if there was, then I'd heat him up. But no, this guy moves just fine. I don't recommend the hot water for softening figures anymore. If you're going to do it, use a hair dryer. Uh, hot water can make paint run. It can. I've it, never had a problem with it, but I have noted. I haven't either. But uh, I had some. I recommended it to somebody uh, for a figure with the, in the Iron Man two line, and they said the paint ran, and they were pissed. Um. So this uh, figure moves very well, and whatever dryer, they make, whatever kind of plastic, a hair dryer will work. Uh, it will work a lot quicker, and it will work uh, more thoroughly and more evenly than water does. So I don't recommend the the water to soften the joints anymore. I need to buy a hair dryer because yeah, I don't have one. Um, whatever this white plastic is that they cast these these parts in, it's got a real glossy feel, but it's really nice. Like. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I have to worry about this figure yellowing. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that honestly. Um, but the uh, okay, yeah, the show. What's that? I hadn't thought about yellowing honestly on this. Uh, well, I just, you know, uh, vintage toys with the white plastic tend to get yellow but honestly it doesn't have to just be vintage stuff newer stuff sometimes has that problem too if they use whatever the wrong grade of plastic is and i looked at him in the package and i'm like i hope i never have to worry about that yellowing over time but honestly i don't think i do i it's just the right level of shiny and glossy without being distracting and yeah, this, this is a really good figure. You know, initially I thought maybe I'd like the the real dark gray and the silver of the deluxe release better, but I don't know. I really like this figure. I think I might actually like this one better than the um oh um well it could be one of those things that. I may keep this one on display and just move the roadie head over. Um, I can see that. Yeah, no, I really like this figure. I was going to open it with the other retro Iron Man figures, but I, I, I had this, I had this carded and hadn't opened it and had it up on the wall. And I'm in the process of redoing my whole basement display. So all the stuff that's still on the card is kind of in a big pile right now. Because, I mean, there is, there is some stuff that I'm just not going to open. I have some San Diego Comic-Con Marvel Universe figures that I'm not going to open. Um, just some of them. Oh, the, yeah. The, <clears throat> yeah, I, I see what you mean. The open hands, yeah, they don't have uh, hinges. articulation on them. Yeah. Uh, I have the, the Wave 1 Marvel Legends Iron Man figures still on the card. I'm not opening those. This guy is badass. I love I love that they painted the details inside the weapons. It's got the electronic glow. Um this guy. Yeah, you know, I went to Iron Man 2 when Justin Hammer is presenting his whole arsenal of little weapons that he deals. And he, he describes the kind of damage that they do. Yes. I believe that this War Machine figure probably has most of those gadgets built into his suit. Yeah. Including um, the, the missile that that would, that's yeah. a bunker buster that would take out the bunker underneath the, bu- the, the one that you just busted. And then yeah. the ex-wife. And then he's got the gun that he called the ex-wife. And... Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Rhodey's armament here would do all of that. You know, the whole presentation of this one over the deluxe one is better. And 
I didn't expect to say that, but. I think this is as close to a perfect figure as you can get. Number one, based off of the yeah, card, so. the figure, and the accessories. I mean, it's it's not quite. I don't. The hinge hands yeah. are a little annoying, but aside from that, this is an amazing figure, and it's well worth. Yes. Yeah, I imagine that these little missiles will bust the bunker on top. Yes. Um. And I love that he comes to three of them. And I love that there's a blast effect for them to plug into. And this war machine. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's just about as perfect as a action figure can get. I am. Anybody who listens to this probably knows that I'm a longtime war machine fan. Like going back long before the MCU, long before I knew much of anything about Iron Man or the Avengers, I was a War Machine fan because he showed up one of the very early issues of Rob Liefeld's uh, X-Force comic, and it was one of those where I was immediately taken with this character, and I wound up going to the comic book store and finding a few other comics that War Machine had been in, and it was it was a long time before I'd learned that I'd read enough to learn that oh he's got the connections with with Iron Man and the rest of the Avengers. He showed up in so many different comics just by himself as War Machine. Yeah. So I've been a Rhodey fan for a long time, and I've got most of his figures, and I think this is my favorite. Yeah, I love yes. that the blast effects look like the missiles are traveling. Yeah, and I I absolutely love that. I, that's how mine's displayed right now, is with the the blast effects. And then there's the uh, the blast effect that goes for his uh, Gatling gun. Yeah, I put I I don't usually display the blast effects with my figures, but I did on this one because they are. Yeah, is, because my war machine that's in my the living room, the display with the other Marvel guys. Yeah, I don't have the blast effects on him, but I think I'm going to change. I think I'm going to change that for this guy, too. That is awesome. I am glad that I finally have this figure. I can't believe that I was a dumbass enough for it to get lost in the shuffle, but you know what? Better late than never, damn it. I'm really um, they do more that we see more of the retro uh figures from the Iron Man line. I, I'd like to I really ever since you talked about yeah, ever since you talked about the deep sea armor and the space armor on that one show, I looked up the 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 space armor and oh fuck. I want a figure of that. Never had a comic book with it in it. But I want a figure of it because, yeah, and I, I've got I, the figure of the. Of it's the, funny because it's it's funny because we were talking about those, and I had guessed the na- the issue that they were in, and I was right on both of them. Oh shit! Yeah. Um. Oh, see, yeah, you. It, it's like a core memory for yeah. you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, the other dude. thing I would like to see in the that we talked about that I would like to see in the retro line is. These are based off of the the Toy Biz Iron Man toy line that was based off the animated series at the time. There was a wave of five or six figures, I don't remember, that didn't get released. So there is a what's a lost wave of the of these retro toy of these of the 93 Iron Man figures. I would like to see those come out on the retro cards. I do wonder if there's a chance they do that because the people at Marvel Legends right now, they're clearly big giant nerds over Marvel and they really like making deep cuts and getting some really obscure stuff in there. And I it, feel like... Yeah, it would be a huge... A huge gimmick to say here is a lost wave of figures 
And people you know, like, wait, what? What? And then I think that would spark a lot of interest on that. So you know what? Even if they only did a couple different ones, I think it'd be really cool and yeah. different. Um, dude, I oh my god, I love this figure. I love this figure. Um oh shit. Yeah, the other one's cool, but whatever. This is definitely replacing it. Um <clears throat> the um yeah, I do see what you mean though. The non-articulated wrist for the for the that is that is weird. Um and it's weird because I mean even in the just like because the other Iron Man figures in the retro line came with articulated wrists. Um, the ones in the Mar just regular Marvel Legends line come with articulated wrists. This is just, it's an anomaly. And it's... Yeah, because it's now he had the fist down before. Still. But if, I, but if I, I put in the open palm, it's going to, because the wrist does not articulate. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it does not work with the uh, with the arm blaster at all. Yeah, um, which is goofy. Yeah, without turning it upside down, so he's got open palm facing up, and yeah, that's that is really weird. That is really weird. It's fine on the other side because right. there's nothing protruding. But yeah, that is okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put the fist down before it warps the uh, blast the wrist blaster all together that's really annoying yeah it is it's it's not perfect but it's it's pretty close a weird oversight <clears throat> that is bad ass fuck yeah <clears throat> um <clears throat> yeah so if they make a space armor because i have the star boost armor that they put out a couple of years ago yeah and i would like to have like a like a comic book sort of counterpart to it. Um, um, I'm not so much on the deep sea armor, but I could see where there would be a lot of appeal for that. Yeah. For, I would see the, for, uh, do the deep sea armor in a deluxe figure, because technically if you read the comic book, he has a regular like armor as an escape armor that's built. So it's like modular oh i see that would be really cool if they could do like a mod like a two figure two figure set so you have the the regular deep sea armor and then you have the what he could what he calls the escape armor which is um in the comic yeah, book because entangled and he has to eject yeah because when he was when he was wearing the hulkbuster suit in uh what was it Captain America, Captain America Civil War? No, Avengers 2. When he was in the Hulkbuster suit, he had a regular armor suit underneath, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, that's so, the premise. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think, uh, like I said, I think for the diehards and the completists, I think they probably should do the deep, the, the deep sea armor, or as one time we would have joked about it being scuba armor i really want them to do the space armor damn it um there um, uh there are as i mentioned on the last episode that we opened the the that we talked about these they there are really really detailed and amazing statues of those two armors but those are the only in only incarnations of those They've never never made it into into plastic. Yes, there are space armors. Yes, there are deep sea armors, but not based off those comic books. Right, not not the not the versions that are iconic yes. from those comics. Yeah. Um, and that really seems like a very strange oversight to me. It really. Um, is. I mean, the Marvel Legends community was. Like a number of years ago, this was like the hill that they were all going to die on. And then it just, it kind of 
fizzled out and I haven't heard anybody bitch about it since. I think the people that like myself that really want these have just resigned themselves to the fact that they're never going to see them and have given up hope on that. And the people that have come since aren't aware of them because the, that the, those comics, I mean, those are the 218 came out in 1989, maybe. I mean, maybe even before that. I mean, the, the comics are 30, 35 years old, and the Space Armor came out in issue 152, which is even older than that. I mean, that's early 80s. Um, Let's see what the date on that is. Uh, 152 came out in, uh, um, around 142, I'm sorry. 152 is the appearance of the, uh, stealth armor. Okay. 142 is the, um, first appearance of the space armor that came out in 1980. Um, now they have done the stealth armor, right? In the Marvel yeah. Legends, line. yeah, um, numerous times. They've done that a couple of times. Yeah, several times. And um, very nice, very nice ones too. I mean, they're they're not quite comic accurate, but they're they're very close. But yeah, the um, one forty two came out one yeah one forty two came out October of nineteen eighty. So I mean, that tells you how old that that comic is. And 218 came out um, in uh, uh, 1987. So, yeah. Um, so that tells you. Know, and thanks to Marvel Fandom. Uh, thank you for to fandom.com for the quick reference on that, on being able to uh, provide those dates for me. <clears throat> um, I'm impressed that you remember the issue numbers. Um, what you know, speaking of Iron Man armors at the convention, you said you found some four inch scale hot toys from Iron Man 3. Now, when did those come out? Because the oh, only I... thing I know about hot toys is that they make really impressive, kind of creepy one six scale or 12 inch figures. I didn't realize that they made a line of figures that were four inches. Okay, so these, yes, uh, to is the simple answer to both of those questions. They are known for their one sixth or twelve inch scale figures, and have just become to the point where they're photorealistic. I mean, they are amazing. Um, oh yeah, Hot Toys also had a line of figures. In, from various properties and they called them snap kits so they did okay. uh they did snap kits for um alien predator and i think they're the ones that did the snap kits for apple seed but i'm not 100 percent on that one. Ooh, nice yes they are super expensive Super hard to find and super fragile. Um, oh, that not, sucks. These are not snap kit figures, however. So, okay, so the so the Iron Man ones, they're not snap kits. No, because I, I'm gonna I, guess by snap kits, kits, you mean all the pieces come individually and you gotta you gotta you gotta because I have a Bandai R2D2 that I got last year that I had to put there, there was a there was a set with BB8 and R2D2. D2. I got as far as putting R2-D2 together completely, and I got part of BB-8 done, and I said, you know what? I'm done with that. Um, yeah, I no. bought this set for R2-D2, and I'm just going to leave it at that now. So, yeah, the, the Iron Man ones, you did not have to put together. No, they are they are on a seven card display. I mean, the the, the box set is amazing. I, I've never seen it before. I am not familiar with those figures at all. I had no idea okay. this thing even existed. And to say that okay. a, major re, a major manufacturer made Iron Man figures that I didn't know about. Yeah, no kidding. That's... I knew that there were there were four-inch scale 
scale-ish bootleg Iron Man figures, and I've seen those. I don't have a set of those. Um, I've seen people, I think Stuntman Fred got one and customized it and <clears throat> did a really good job with it. But I mean, it's Stuntman Fred. He's an amazing customizer. I wish we could get him on the show, but he's declined every time I've asked him. Um, but he's a really cool guy. Um, yeah, I, I've i seen pictures of some bootleg but I was yeah. posting like his it, like some of the toy figures. Yeah, they posted like an Iron Patriot that was from a bootleg four inch line. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So these aren't those. These are because not... when you sent me the picture of the seven figure set, I was wondering if they were if they were like models or statues or because when you said so because they look cool, but in this picture, it's hard to tell if they're functional figures. I can't so, tell. I'm not sure. Um, but it. Yeah, they. But I am a no. little shocked that yet yeah, you didn't know about these because they've got to be obscure if you didn't know about them. I wonder yeah. if they were only released like elsewhere in the world. Um, I don't know. I mean, the guy's got like three sets of them, so I'm hoping that he still has three sets of them. Sunday when we go because I'm gonna try and haggle him down on price. How much? How much was that set? They wanted 250 bucks for it. Oh damn! Um, damn. Um, I mean it's a nice set, and they have all the the armors from the first two movies because it's the it's, the it's card the says of, Iron Man three. Yeah. Um, it's basically the whole. So in Iron Man three. He has a hall of armors in his home that has all of the Iron Man armors up to that point because he's still working on the Mark 42 at that point in time. It's not yeah. a small armor. Yeah, so he's got the Mark II, the Mark Three, which the, the Mark II, for anybody that is, that's the silver, the flight test that he does. Yeah. The Mark Three is the first red and gold armor. That's yeah. the one that he uses through the end of that movie. And then uh, Mark Four is what shows up in Avengers. Yes. And yeah, that's because it's got the, the triangular arc reactor. And I think that's in that set. Um, yeah. But I can't remember what other figures were in that set. Uh, well, actually, the Mark Four didn't. Because I think the Mark Seven was the one that shows up. Mark Seven is the one that shows up later in the Avengers at, at the end of Avengers. Um there's a Mark V in there as well, okay. which is the yeah. Suitcase. Well, the Mark V that's the suitcase armor. Actually, I, I have a picture of it. Let me look. Yeah, um, yeah, because the Mark V, I know it's a suitcase armor because of all of that is my favorite armor in the MCU. Uh, the my favorite Iron Man armor in the MCU to this day. I love that armor. I wish that it had had a longer lifespan. But Whiplash really decimated it. But fuck, I love that idea. And it's directly inspired by the Silver Centurion armor from the comics, right? Yes. Where it was in the yeah. suitcase. Yeah. Um, but in this case, the 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 suitcase was the armor and it transformed and came over his so yeah. So the set contains a Mark One, a Mark II, a Mark Three, Mark Four, Mark Five, Mark Six, and Mark Seven. So yeah, all of the armors up until the beginning of Iron Man three. All right, so huh, trying to remember the Mark six. All right, so that must have been what he wore early in the Avengers movie. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean it's a cool looking set. No, the Mark um, six was the one that he showed up in at the end of Iron Man two. That's the first one that has the triangular chest piece. He has a new. Oh, line. that's the one with the okay with the triangle. Okay, yeah. um, that's the final the final battle. Oh, um, okay. When when War Machine is in the 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 retrofitted armor and okay, um, because uh, yeah, that is a really cool set. I didn't remember that the Mark One was in it because yeah, he well, gets the Mark One back when from Obadiah Stane, because Obadiah Stane gets the Mark I from... Yeah, because he takes it from Afghanistan 
because those ten rings goons were they reassembled. That's right. They send it back, and Obadiah Stane bases his Ironmonger armor. He basically Retro- makes it bigger. No. Oh, that's right. So Tony Stark did get it back. All right, that makes sense. It so just, it just they don't show it on screen, but he okay. gets it back um, from Obadiah Stane. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I don't. And one been a while since I watched Iron Man three. What with because of the suckage and all. Yeah. Um, I've seen it. But, I've seen it like three times. I think maybe. I've seen it maybe four. I've seen it four or five times, and it comes down to every time I I watch it, I like it a little bit more. But that isn't saying anything because it's kind of like having, like, it's kind of like having aches and pains. You eventually just get used to them, and they become more tolerable. Yeah. Iron Man three becomes more watchable on repeat, but. It's not because it becomes better. I just I just become more accepting over yeah. some of the most the more irritating things in the movie. Um, yeah. um I I've gotten to that point. It's still it's still very painful for me to watch that movie, and I absolutely hate well. It. The last time I watched it, I watched it with my firstborn child because we were going to go see Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And you got to kind of have to, you have to see. Right. Because I saw, I saw Shang-Chi in the theater when it was released, when I was in Texas um, with she who shall not be named. And I knew watching that movie in the theater that when I got back up here, that my kid was going to want to see it because like when they go to Talo with the, with all the mythical, creatures and everything i'm like oh my god my kid's gonna love this but yeah. upon deciding that i was gonna take my kid to go see it i realized that because that came out in 2021 and i realized that references like to the mandarin and trevor slattery were going to be completely because i wasn't sure if my kid had ever seen Iron Man, if i had ever watched it with with my kid or not or if that was one that had just Falling through the cracks, what? Because it sucks. Um, but I'm like, yeah, it's going to be impossible to watch Shang Chi without having. So we watched Iron Man three, and something about watching that movie with a kid that that is enthusiastic. I'm like, all right, this isn't. It's not. It's not too bad. It's better than it used to be, but I ain't saying anything. Um. Because it's still at the bottom of my list of the MCU. Still at the bottom of my list. Yeah, it's um, pretty bad. Along with that second stupid Spider-Man movie. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home sucks. Um, um, I But, so, the Trevor Slatter, I'm like, oh yeah, no, we're gonna have to watch. So we watched it, and it's not, but, yeah, I don't feel the need to watch it again. Maybe ever. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so that's Seth cool. So, you know, if you can if you can talk him down on the price, I think that would be like a I feel like that should just be part of your collection. I I don't a, know but I don't know if you'd need to open it. It kind of seems I, like it'd be cool I to leave it in the that, package. Yeah, I would keep that in the package. Quite honestly. Because, because it, the it, the novelty and the rarity, I mean I literally have come across something that i did not know an iron man a piece of iron man action figures that i didn't know existed yeah saying something because i own almost every iron man action figure that has ever been made in six and four inch scale you know i think you need a migo Iron Man from the seventies. Um, want one? If I keep. The, I, look at the, I, look I at just. The do you remember Wizard and Wizard Toy Fair magazines? Yep. They. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because Toy Fair would always set up these little funny dioramas with Mego figures. Yes. And Iron Man was always there, and they'd always put the bubbles around his head because yeah, he's drunk. But drunk. I, it's it's. It's very memorable, and even though on its own it's kind of a goofy-looking figure, 
Yes. If you have an emotional connection to Wizard Magazine and Toy Fair like I do, it's I look at things like Mego Spider Man that they always use dioramas and it made Spider Man funnier than I'd ever realized it could be. It I just remember there's one where there's there's a bunch of little micro machine scale Jawas. They're about yes. this big. Yes. And you got Amigos Spider-Man, who's eight inches tall. And so they're like little mouse-sized things around this. But he's got a hammer, and he's smashing the Jawas under the hammer. And I think when I had that issue of the comic, and I think when I flipped to that page, and I'm looking at all the panels, and I'm like, I think that is the funniest to this day that I've ever left in anything I've seen in the magazine. I am going to make your day and right now. I think it endeared me to that that magazine forever. And I feel like Mego Iron Man would be worth having. Oh, believe just... me, I I want I want one in my collection. Believe me, I and I keep an eye out for it at at conventions. I that's one of the things I do look for as an Iron as a Mego Iron Man. I will make your day. And to tell you right now that they have collected all of those comics from Wizard and they've put them in trade paperback form. No shit, really? Yeah. No shit. All yeah. right. I, I think there's now seven, I, want one of those. I think there's seven volumes of them and I have them all in my in my collection. I'll I'll Oh shit. I'll, I'll I didn't realize that. I know. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I Were told they... you I was just gonna make your day, and there you go. Uh, I will they, send you pictures. Did of they them. collect those after the magazines weren't being published anymore? Yeah, these That's are these are old. Awesome. I bought them. Um, I bought these probably ten years ago. I've had them for a long time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I Remind love me that. I will send you a picture when I get home. Yeah, some of my, some of my Marvel nerd trivia came from those from comics that I never read before. I didn't realize some of it. I learned some of my early Marvel trivia from Toy Fair. So whether it was accurately representing the Marvel Universe or not, I don't know, but it was funny as shit. Um, yeah. It, But yeah, Drunk Iron... Yeah, long before I knew what Demon in a, in a Bottle was, I knew the reference of Drunk Iron Man from Toy yes. Fair. Yes. And Thor, with his... With his old English speech with the deeds and nows. I'm like, God, people used to read that in comic books. And, but I'm like, it's funny as all get out in Toy yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um, and when they make comics where Mego, Spider-Man and Iron Man and Batman and Robin interact, there is nothing funnier. Yeah, um, it is hilarious. Highly recommend. Uh, I don't know if yes. it goes off of Amazon or not. Because I don't. I'm gonna have well, and if they're not on Amazon, maybe I can find them on eBay. That's I think hysterical. I got mine off of eBay. I think I bought a. I think I bought a set of them off the of eBay. I think I had to go back and get like the one or two separately because it wasn't a full set. But uh, I I, I'm them. pretty sure I got mine off a uh, off <laughs> eBay. That's awesome. I had no idea they collected those. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty um, sure it's seven volumes. I will uh, send you pictures when I get home because yeah, I have. They're in my they're in my collection. They're in my library. Fuck yeah. Um fuck yes. <clears throat> you know, I know that the world is a different place than it used to be. And we can separate, you know, we, we can you can sort of divide your life and your memories into certain segments where things happened. But I think collectively when Wizard magazine and its spin-off uh spin-off books went belly up i think that may have been the beginning of the end it was a dark time for comic i'm just saying i'm not saying that wizard was directly responsible no. but i'm not saying that it wasn't responsible it was during that um, time when when comic book sales tanked and marvel sold sold off all of the rights to all of their properties to keep the lights <clears> on i mean that's 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 how they stayed solvent is they sold the the movie rights to all their characters and that they are just now getting them all back. Um, and they still don't have them all because Sony still has 
Fantastic Four and Spider Man. Yeah, it's it's a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle that the Blade movies happened and were as popular as they were because all the other comic book movies they were trying to make back then, most of them did not happen. Um, well, and I think a lot of that's just due to the talent of Wesley Snipes. Uh, and people didn't realize that it was a Marvel comic book movie. They didn't really promote it that way. Right. Um, yeah, because I'll tell you what, Blade was my introduction to the comic. And somewhere in the credits, it does mention based on the Marvel <laughs> But it's I'm not like, prominent. I didn't know. And then when I went and looked it up in Wizard Magazine, I'm like, wait, Blade on screen was much cooler than Blade in the comics. Um, Because what was it? Tomb of Dracula that he popped up in? and 32, uh, maybe, I think was his first appearance. I don't remember. Yeah, he was. he's very unassuming looking. But Wesley Snipes made him into a complete badass. Um, Tomb of Dracula number 10, sorry. Um, July 1973, so that should tell you all you need to know about a black man in comic books. Man, 1973, Jesus. Um, so, the first Blade was released 25 years after his first comic book appearance. Yeah, that was, that was the month and year I was born, actually. So, it'll, it'll be, it'll, it's, yeah. 51 years ago his first appearance um, in comic books. So height of the disco era. Let's just, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Cause Dazzler showed up fairly shortly after. Um, um, uh, she may have already been. Maybe um, she, when I think of seventies comic books, X-Men that, one, 30 was her first appearance and that was 1979 okay quite a bit okay late. so she was actually released the tail end of the disco era um because yeah. yeah with with the roller skates and the silver lycra leisure suit i'm like mm -hmm. um i i uh i don't um yeah, boy, that was a different time. So really, Blade was released 25 years after his first appearance in comics. And it's been about 25 years now since Marvel first announced that they were going to make an MCU Blade movie. And it's no closer to being made than it was 25 years ago. Further, um, I saw recently that, I don't know, I get a lot of stuff in my feed. Some of it's reliable, some of it's not. I saw that the like third person that they'd slated for the director left the project. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The third, yes. The third director has left um, the actor that was announced five years ago to be blade. I think he's got a lot going on and I think he's on the verge of maybe possibly walking away from it um, because for reasons that I can't fed them, they can't seem to get it together with that Blade movie. I don't know what the issue is, but I mean, I know that there are other Marvel movies that ended up in development hell for a while, but they usually figure it out. They usually, yeah. they get around to it. They, they, they put it out sometime later than they wanted to, but fucking Blade, there's an Easter egg to Blade at the end of the Eternals movie, yeah. and they're no closer that movie is no fucking closer to coming out than it was when they, it's very strange. My um, unpopular opinion is they need to scrap whatever they're working on and get Wesley Snipes back and just pick Just up. get him. Yeah. You know what? He is as synonymous with Blade as Hugh Jackman is with Wolverine. Yeah. And I really believe that if you want to, that if you want to recast those roles, you have to start with the originals and have them pass the baton. So if you want that that new actor who's Marcella Ali, I think he's if you want him to play Blade, awesome. But you they have to get Wesley Snipes in there. They have to. Um he yeah. is 
yeah and i from what i've seen i'm you know i know he got in a lot of trouble with like tax evasion or something like that a number of years ago yeah, something like that. Uh, uh, but <laughs> has expressed interest that from what i've seen i don't know how reliable that is he's expressed interest well, that he would do yeah, well he would do him again. Cause he, yeah because he's free and clear of that stuff now and he's done other movies yeah so if you're gonna make another blade an mcu blade I'm sorry, you, you, it's it's asinine to do it without Wesley Snipes in the role, in, in in the as you know, if the new guy they want him, if they want to do a multiverse thing, or say that you know he's another daywalker, that's okay. But I just, Hi, Isabel, it just seems goofy to me too. You know, I wonder if they want to get Wesley Snipes in, and that's why they're taking so long on this MCU Blade movie. Who knows? Um, I think they've just, they've kind of, to me, it seems like they've reached, I don't want to say a saturation point, but they've, they've kind of run out of their more recognizable, more popular characters. I mean, they've done everything that they can do with Captain America up until the point. And they're the Captain America four is coming out and it looks pretty good. Um, you know, they're running out of stuff to do with Thor. What, I don't know what they're going to do. You know, Iron Man's kind of reached the end of its, its lifespan. It, it seems like, so, I mean, the, the, the a list stuff. I mean, we're, we're waiting for the X-Men to kind of come back into, into the MCU but well, aside from yeah. that, I mean, it, we're waiting for a good Fantastic Four movie, which I don't, I still am, have my doubts that anybody can make for reasons that I cannot explain because Fantastic Four should be a very easy property to make because of how it's one of the, the pillars of the Marvel Universe. I mean, it's it's one of the original... Well, Marvel Universe books. They have a rich history. They have a rich list of villains. Well, because they've announced the cast of the MCU yeah. Fantastic Four movie. I don't particularly care. Not a Fantastic Four fan, but I just want to see does... Fantastic Four movie. I'm not a I wouldn't consider myself a fan either, but I just want to see a good one. Well, um, and it might be great. And I have seen everything the MCU has put out except Moon Knight. I like Oscar Isaac. I cannot I like possibly give I a shit. Was, I I like uh, I liked Moon Knight. I read a lot of it, not a lot of it, but he was uh, in Punisher every once in a while, so I I knew a little bit about it. I thought they did a really. Yeah, good. I mean, I do vaguely know who he is, but I understand that. I've heard mixed things about it, and it's one of those things where I'll watch it eventually. But I haven't watched. And I haven't watched Werewolf by Night either. Um, I haven't seen that. I one kept yet. meaning to before Halloween last year and the year before that. Then I didn't. Um, so I I haven't watched a lot of the. I didn't watch She Hulk. I haven't watched the Marvel. Yeah, She Hulk. I watched. Um, my kid and I watched that. Um, yeah. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I haven't rewatched it, but I watched it. I've seen WandaVision twice. Seen um, WandaVision. Yeah, I've watched Ms. Marvel me. three times through. Um, and I've watched... Yeah, I'm not a Ms. Uh, Marvel fan. I just... The the Marvels have no... I was never a fan of the... Um, of I didn't know... I mean, I knew who she was, but I didn't... What's that? I just... Sorry, the internet's. We're back to the old days of shitty internet, man. This is like I'm having flashbacks to when we used to use Skype. Yeah, um, this is like deja vu here. I'm having flashbacks. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, I don't. Um, I don't. Uh, um, I got distracted by my cat. I don't know what we were talking about. She's watching her shadow on the wall because I have two lamps on. 
and so there's shadows being in now she's she's watching her shadow or there's a fly in here i don't know one or the other um but yeah, yeah i got distracted by the oh, cat yeah and just i was just saying that i am i have no vested interest in the marvels it's not it's not my it's not my <laughs> oh oh that's right because i adore the captain marvel movie Ms. Marvel, aside of who, who she was in the comics, I never read anything with her in it. But that's because I haven't read I haven't read a comic book in years. I mean, yeah, I don't... So a lot of my knowledge of Marvel stuff in the last 10 years is like passing interest. Um, they're like... A, like I, I, I may have seen something online about it, but I haven't read any of it. But Ms. Marvel was great. Um, and... The I saw that they announced the Vision series coming out. Um, really? Yeah. Um, with uh, <clears throat> Paul Bettany coming back as the White Vision that was released, or that was uh, it was teased in the end that of showed uh, up in WandaVision. WandaVision. Um, Are they ever going to do this <clears throat> so, series? Because that seemed to get lost in production hell too. Uh. Wait, what? Agatha Harkness? Yeah. yeah, it's coming out in September. Oh. Um, yeah, it's uh it's gone through a couple of different titles, but I think her uh what was the song called from WandaVision? Agatha All Along. I yeah. think that's what the title of the show is now, because it was Coven of Darkness, I think or Coven of Chaos or something, and now I think it's just Agatha all along. Um, uh, but yeah, it's coming out in September, I think. Um, but I don't... Yeah, Vision was announced, but I don't know if there's been any movement on that, and um, they don't... Hawkeye was really good, but mm -hmm. I'm biased, because I really like uh, Florence Pugh as uh, Yelena Belova, and yeah, job. she fucking made the Hawkeye series. I mean, it's fine. Jeremy Renner's good in the part, yeah, and I, I liked it. I love Jeremy Renner. But I liked it a lot more once she showed up, and we saw the little banter that her and Kate Bishop had, and so I'm really glad that Yelena's showing up in the Thunderbolts movie. Yes. And I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, I was really wishing that they'd do a MCU like a Disney Plus series or with more um as an excuse to get more uh Kate Bishop and Yelena stuff. Um I don't know they, they don't need another Hawkeye series, but I like most everything Marvel has done. I just haven't watched Moon Knight yet, but um I it's just much. I enjoyed it. Um yeah, I should give it a watch. Um I wasn't in the right headspace to watch it last time or when they first came out, but yeah, I need to watch that. I need to watch Werewolf by Night. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious about that now too because I had forgotten that it was a thing to begin with. Um, yeah, so at some point I need to watch those. Um, oh well, maybe I'll try watching Moonlight this weekend. Um, <clears throat> but. And I, I want to watch some of She-Hulk just for the uh, just the Hulk cameos. I enjoyed the shit out of that show. Really? As as a guy who read uh the the She-Hulk comics back in the back in the late eighties, I was devoted to those comics and this show captures that spirit so well talking to the camera, breaking the fourth wall, making cracking jokes in the middle of the plot, stopping the plot to make jokes straight out of those comics. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I know, on that, I know the show got a lot of shit, but it also got a lot of shit from the same people that give everything a lot of shit now. And the fact is I just tune, tune the haters out on everything. I don't care. I'll just watch whatever. And, she Hulk was highly entertaining, and I recommend it through and through. What you need um, to do is finish watching Fallout so we can do our Fallout show. 
I did finish it like two weeks you, ago. You didn't tell me that. Well, you were supposed to let me know. I forgot. When you, when you um, were done with well, this. We've been busy. Here. We haven't. Well, yeah, we've had other shows to do. Um, all right, yeah, we should. Yeah, we could do that next week. Um, well, now I got to watch it again. It's been too long. Well, you should do that. Yeah, I um, probably will. <laughs> um, but uh, well, yeah, we went a little while there without doing any shows. So, yeah. um, um, but um, yeah, we, we should. Yeah, we should do that show. Oh, all right. All right. I'm... All right. And that's that's about all I got for this particular episode. Yeah, I just I wanted to I wanted to hear you recount your experiences at uh Denton at the expo today. And I wanted to hear about your I'm story Adam with Adam. Adam. It was amazing. Yeah, um, that's awesome. I'm gonna talk to my buddy tomorrow because he was gonna stand in any circus line. Uh and uh, he was going to see uh, the gal from, um, hang on a sec here, I can find it. I, Michelle, um, Michelle Hurd. He was going to go see Michelle Hurd. Oh, from everything. Yeah, she was on Picard. Um, yeah, she was on Picard. Because <clears throat> uh, I ran in, he was standing in line. Yeah, she was in. To see her while I was, uh, when I was. But just after I had gotten done seeing Adam Savage, um, he's oh, gonna go cool. see. Uh, he's gonna go see uh, Rosario Dario tomorrow. Um. Oh, is she there for Ahsoka? Yeah. Nice. Um. Um. Nice. Um. Yeah. Good stuff. Um. We should. We should get Jason. We should get that guy on the show sometime. Because he's got a lot of cool stories like that. Dude, I'm happy to get anybody on the show that wants to talk about cool things that they've experienced at the convention. Since conventions are a rare thing for me, and you always go with specific missions to talk to. But some people just like going to conventions. Um, well, that's so, what we used um, to do. It's like, you know, we used to just go to conventions. And then it was, well, let's get some autographs well let's get action figures autographed and then it was like now i want to get my own stuff autographed and that's those are the only autographs that i get anymore is 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 stuff that i have made myself <clears throat> um yeah because you get these celebrities that you've made it and they gawk over it and drool on it and take pictures with it and brag to people they know about it so um yeah it's pretty cool oh um, but yeah. um yeah you know what we should do our fallout show next week and then you can talk about the rest of your weekend at the expo. we can so, do that all right and i'm gonna go eat dinner because i am very hungry and i haven't eaten anything all day all right man i'll talk to you later all right and as always Oh, Thanks for watching. Please do all that fun social media stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. Uh, just out of curiosity, who would you like to see at a convention? Who would you go get an autograph from? And what would you get autographed? Put that in the comments below and let's talk about that on another show. And mm -hmm. all right. Watching. Thanks for